The Outshine Film Festival, Fort Lauderdale Digital Edition is December 3rd to 6th. Watch this. Shine Film Festival's Fort Lauderdale Virtual Edition, featuring queer films from all over the world. Presenting 18 feature films and three shorts programs, plus a drive-in movie night at Pier 66. Watch the best LGBTQ plus films from home. Tickets are on sale now. Check out the program at OutshineFilm.com. This is an exciting week. Happening on Television Network is proud to serve again as their digital television sponsor, this time for the Outshine LGBTQ Film Festival, Fort Lauderdale Virtual Edition, presented by Gilead Sciences and Broward County. The festival is going to showcase 21 world-class, contemplative, comedic, and creative films from 11 countries and several making their U.S. debuts during this streaming festival. All of the films will be made available to viewers throughout the state of Florida from December 3rd to 6th. And Happening Out Television Network will be hosting a series of lives, uh, live guest interviews throughout the week. Tonight, we are going to go live to London and to Nigeria. We are pleased to have both the director and producer from the film Walking with Shadows about a man who has been running his whole life searching for love and acceptance from his family and driven to recreate himself as a respected father, husband, and brother. But when his past starts to catch up with him, his fabricated life begins to unravel. Joining us now from London is the director, Ifa O'Kelly. And all the way from Nigeria is the producer, and forgive me in advance, doing the best I can, Olumide Makumjula. And uh, we thank both of you for joining us tonight at Q News uh, tonight. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, let's begin. Uh, before we talk about your film, let's talk about the film festival process. You're, you're participating uh, in your film, uh, you as uh, director and producer, uh, in one of the most important LGBTQ film festivals in the world. But this year, it's digital. And that must seem kind of strange to a director and a producer to uh, be promoting uh, their new film um, in a digital fashion. What's that been like for you in, in COVID-19 world? Uh, uh, well, uh, for me, I think, um, you know what? I'm just glad that uh, festivals have found a way to survive and thrive. And, you know, we're living in a streaming, a streaming society, a streaming world now. And as much as I love the cinema and I'm passionate about the cinema, I think accessibility is even more important. And the fact that a lot more people internationally can now enjoy these films and you can still sell the tickets, the filmmakers are still benefiting and there's still a kind of community created online. Um, you know, of course we miss the social aspects of interacting, but um, I think uh, this is definitely a positive uh, to come from it. And here we are. Lagos and London being able to uh, interact because of that. Hmm. Any thoughts from Nigeria? I mean, I, I, I agree with I agree with, I agree with Ifa. I think that one of the most important thing is that despite the current situation, the film is able to make its own journey and travel to other parts of the world. Even though none of us can get on the plane from London or from Lagos to, you know, any other parts of the world, people can still see the film and we can still connect with the world. And I think that's the most important thing, you know, is the journey that the film is making that is the most important thing. You know, I'm, I'm curious to both of you. Uh, I, I noticed this in the first time that uh, the Miami version of Outshine uh, launched in August and uh, they were completely uncertain about what would happen in a digital film festival. And what they found out was very, very interesting. And I, I would think be, I'm, I'm curious on your take about it. They found out that if you had an independent film and you're an independent director, independent producer, and you go to a film festival, maybe 300 people are watching live, but in a digital platform that is streaming, you can touch so many more people in so many more rich and diverse ways. That must be very exciting to be able to bring 
uh, your independent film to so many more people that would ever watch it in a single screening at a film festival. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, tell us yeah. a little bit about uh, the film, uh, Walking with Shadows. Uh, tell us a little bit about the story and uh, and its creative in inspiration. Who, first off, who who came up? Uh, who's first in this process, the creative process, and and how did it unfold as independent filmmakers, a producer, and a director here? And and by the way, I'm going to ask you. You can prepare. I'm going to ask you who's more important in the process, the producer or the director. <laughs> uh, would you like to start um, as I feel like it's your baby to begin with <laughs> oh so the producer is more important all right let's start there <laughs> no I, th I think I, I think everybody is important I think everybody is important you know in the process I mean this the theme started its own journey about nearly five years ago actually over five years ago with, you know, with a friend of mine, you know, who we co-produced together for me and other. And then um, with the author of the book, who is also a friend of mine, Judy Debia, I mean, you know, they were a process of trying to raise resources for the film, process of trying to find the right team to work with. And even when we found that, you know, process of trying to ensure that from production in Nigeria to post-production, you know, to all of the different stage, finding the right cast, finding the right, you know, produ um, actors, you know, you know, team on ground to work with. I think that this process in itself, you know, for me and for me, it's something that's very quite personal. And it started from how I wanted to just tell stories, stories of, you know, LGBT person. And I think it's different also for me because it's, the stories are also very quite personal for me as a gay man, you know, who live, who live in Nigeria. So I'm very quite keen in seeing how we can tell you know wide range of story about you know LGBTQ person and the reality that it faced in Nigeria, you know through fame through you know all the means of visual funds. Oh, Lumi Day, I want to I want to pursue that before uh, we come back to Ifa. Um, we have reported so many stories at Q News tonight um, about LGBTQ rights on the continent. Uh, in Africa, and uh, specifically a number of stories about Nigeria. Tell us a little bit about what the LGBT experience is like in Lagos uh, and in Nigeria uh, in, in general. It's, it, first off, um, uh, homosexuality is uh, criminalized in Nigeria or decriminalized? It's criminalized. It is criminalized. So tell us about what the experience, if I, if I lived in Lagos, uh, in Nigeria, what would it be like for one of the gayest guys on the planet? <laughs> what would it be like uh, to live there? I mean, if you do live in Nigeria, I mean, as long as you're not out, you know, you might be fine. If you are out, out and out, then you do require to manage your own security in a certain way. And I think that, and I think that is a context for someone like me. I mean, I'm very quite out and open about, about my sexual orientation. I've worked in LGBTQ activism in the last 14 years. So, you know, I'm very quite cautious around my security. I mean, I live here at the moment, you know, but I'm also very quite cautious around my security. You do have the social, you know, related challenges that you will face as a gay man. You know, the somewhat sometimes where you feel isolated from the things that happen, you know, within the larger space. But you also have to deal with the legal components, you know, where you can't go to a police to report an incident because then instead of the police to focus on the incident, they will have to focus on your sexuality. And I think that where you live in Nigeria also doesn't matter. You know, Nigeria has got 32 states. So Lagos is a commercial city. So the kind of human rights violation that you face will be different from the kind that you will face in a place like the Northern Nigeria, where you have Kano Kaduna, where they are more religious extremists, you know, and also a stronger religious view. But that doesn't remove the fact that the average gay man in Nigeria is bound to face some kind of isolation, discrimination, stigma, and if possible, some kind of physical violence, either from family or from community, as a result of how they look, you know, and how they behave. Especially, you know, gay men who look feminine and lesbian women who look masculine presenting based on societal gender prescription. Hmm. It, it, it seems to me uh, your film, uh, 
uh, both of your film, uh, bo for both of you, your film Walking with Shadows seems to be apropos with what you just described as uh, goes on in Lagos and in Nigeria. That's what you must do uh, to survive. Um, uh, yeah. The inspiration is very clear in the film. Makes me much, it makes me very interested in, in wanting to, um, to see the film. In contrast to Nigeria, uh, Ifa, you're in London, which is one of the most pro-LGBT cities on the entire planet. Uh, hearing his story and, and how you directed this film of what this story uh, is all about, it must have really been an eye-opening experience of what the LGBTQ community experiences generally in some places in the world, but specifically in, in Nigeria. What was that experience for you uh, in the learning process? What was that like? Um, yeah, so based on, uh, the film was originally based on this novel and covering a lot of what Olumide uh, experienced there. So obviously I'm not born in London, I'm from Ireland and, uh, you know, being, uh, gay in Ireland or part of the LGBT community uh, was illegal uh, until 93. Uh, so I grew up with a history of, um, you know, uh, the LGBT community uh, feeling like it was a very taboo subject. And a lot of my friends, even of my generation, felt very, uh, uh, found it difficult coming out to their families. And um, so I had a sense of, you know, uh, empathy and I felt like the story not just covered this uh, journey of this man it really was about his the struggle to be wanting to be accepted and the struggle to be accepted and even accept yourself and uh, you know it, it was it, it saddens me so much that this is still going on in the world. You know, um, I thought <laughs> that we can see how much Ireland has progressed in the last two decades, but it's it's still really a prevalent problem. And uh, you would hope that stories like this, can, and luckily with festivals like this, can open up people's eyes a bit more. What's happening still internationally? Yeah. Um, it's still no small problem, um, and it really is something that hopefully will people will open their hearts and minds a bit more to just accepting people for who they are and who they want to love and it's really should be not such a, a problem for people you know but unfortunately there's big steps to be taken still and I, I connected with that and I felt I wanted to be, help in some way and be a part of this film. You know uh, to your point uh it, I, I would, I would be, it would be remiss on my part not to note that we have also made the note about Ireland many times in 2020, including your leadership uh, in Ireland. Uh, and there has been dramatic progress in terms of LGBTQ representation at the highest levels of uh, the Irish government. Uh, which we have, as Americans, watched very closely. Uh, America, we remind you, this film festival is getting ready to start here in South Florida. Uh, we draw your attention to uh, this very interesting and unique opportunity to get a glimpse of LGBT life in, uh, in Africa, in Nigeria, uh, called Walking uh, with uh, Shadows. Uh, any final thoughts either of you would like to make about uh, participating and seeing the film? Are you excited about uh, uh, being in the film festival. It's very warm and nice here, by the way. Uh, just saying, um, <laughs> our weather is a little bit better than yours, Aoife, so uh, you should be very Sunshine. jealous. <laughs> and mine's way, yeah. way better than two of you put together. Absolutely. All right. All right, well, yeah, thank, thank you, you very so much. Uh, we are very excited to uh, see the film. Uh, tune in uh, this week. Uh, there's many special events going on at the Outshine Film Festival. The Fort Lauderdale Digital Edition, December 3 through 6. And Aoife and Olumide, uh, thank you very much for participating tonight with uh, uh, Q News tonight. Thank you. Bye.